Beautiful souls, do you have a prayer request or want us to send you healing energy today? Would you like us to be praying for your friend or loved one? If this is you, go to worldslargestprayernetwork.com to submit your prayer request. And while you're there, please sign up to join our team of prayer warriors. The angels say prayer not only opens you to miracles, raises your vibration, and helps you heal, but the more you pray, the more God's presence is felt on earth. Feel your angels' love as they surround you right now, and listen for the positive, loving messages your angels intended specifically for you in today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. And today we have on Michaela to share her angel stories, including one angel story from when she was little. Michaela, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. You have Yay. no idea. Your podcast has seriously just opened such a door since I've found it. So, <laughs> Yay. Cool to be here. Oh, okay. I'm so excited to hear that. Yeah, take it away. Share your first story. Okay. All right. So just a little backstory. Um, so my initial angel stories are about my mom. So I'm going to give you just a backstory. Um, so she's a single mom of six kids, and I'm the youngest. And when I was seven, we um, would go and see my dad up in Idaho and for two weeks out of every summer. So my mom was down in Las Vegas. We were in Idaho. And we went swimming at Rick's College, and there was this high dive that I was dying to go on. And so I went on it, and it was awesome. But there was this one time that I climbed up to the very top and was about to step onto the board, and I slipped, and I fell backward, and I went down to the cement. So crazy enough, I was dying to call my mom and tell her what happened. So I call her the next morning and I'm like, mom, this happened. I'm okay. But I just had to tell you that this crazy thing happened. And she just like stopped. And I was like, are you there? And she's like, oh my gosh, I had a dream that that happened as it was happening. And I immediately began praying and hoping that you were okay. And that angel would carry you down. And she's like, Michaela, your angels carried you down. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so when from seven years old, I've always known that I've had angels my spirit team with me. I've always been safe and protected even through all the crazy stuff that's gone on in my life. So really cool. She's been a really good guide throughout my life with angels. So that's my first story with her. Um, that's incredible. Yeah, it was really cool. So with my mom, um, her and I are extremely close, me being the baby of the family. There's that thing with your baby, you know, your baby's your baby forever. <laughs> And um, so I was a super shy kid, not very confident. So my mom was my best friend, you know, and she's been my best friend my whole life. I used to tease her and be like, I'm going to live with you forever, you know. <laughs> and it, um, funny enough, I kind of did because I went through a divorce and I moved back in with her for a while. <laughs> so I did. I lived with her for a long time and we were really close, did everything together. And um, so she passed away a year ago. Um, in October. October 15th is when she died last year. So uh, when she died, it was kind of a shock to all of us because she always lived a very uh, natural and holistic life. She was a very healthy person. She did carry a lot of stress from, you know, life <laughs> and being a single mom. So when she got sick, we all kind of thought it was just a cold or a flu. So we didn't really like take it very seriously. Obviously, we were there for her. We checked in on her and we noticed kind of it getting a little bit worse and worse. And then there was one day that she just collapsed and she was really having a hard time breathing. And so we took her, rushed her into the hospital, which she was really wanting to avoid because, you know, when you live like holistically, you try to avoid doctors only when they're necessary. So um, we talked her into taking her in and put her on oxygen and they found out that she had uh, little blood clots in both of her lungs and she was just she was really sick. So they had her on oxygen for a couple days, but it just wasn't doing what it was supposed to. And so they put her on a ventilator and um, she was on the ventilator for about two weeks. And it was kind of interesting because they do what they, you call a spontaneous awakening when they're on the ventilator to kind of wake them up, make sure that everything's still functioning, that they can move 
move and respond. And so they did that. And I was able to be there for the very first time. And she woke up and looked right at me and she goes, take it out. I want to go home. And of course, I'm just like, oh, I'm doing everything I can. I don't, you know, we, if we take it out, I don't know if you're going to make it They're That's what they're telling us. And she just kept saying, I mean, obviously she can't speak, so she's mouthing it. And she just kept saying, I want to go home. I want to go home. And um, so we kind of talk her down and calm her down and just let her know, you know, you we got to do this in order for you to get better. And it was the next day, I believe, I went home went to bed and I had this dream and she sits up in the bed. She pulls the tube out and she just like breathed the biggest breath of fresh air. And I was like, we have to get this tube out. <laughs> so I got with all my siblings and um, my aunts and uncles, and we had a family meeting basically of deciding to take the tube out and take her off the life support. And so um, we, it was crazy because I have a sister who also woke up one morning and she had my mom in her head saying, take it out. It's killing me. And so obviously we're like, okay, we're taking this thing out. So we gather together, um, on October 15th and we go to get the tube removed. And I thought that when they did that, I would have to leave the room because I it just, I was freaked out. But when the time came, I just couldn't bring myself to leave her side. So I sat there, you know, we're all kind of just waiting and it took about 15 minutes for her to take that last breath. <clears throat> so my mom's favorite number is the number seven. And she knows that I'm like super into the angel numbers, you know, like 11, 11, 222. So um, when she was taking her last breath on the screen above her is seven, 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 seven. And I was just like this huge reminder that like, she's still here, even though her body is not, you know, and that was really cool. Still hard, obviously, but just a really cool reminder, like Michaela, I'm here. And so seven, so that's her sign for me is the number seven. So, and I see it all the time, everywhere, like in my car, I'll see 77 or like a license plate or whatever. So it's super cool. So the day, um, the day she died later that day, my siblings and I, we got together over at my sister's house because nobody really wanted to be alone. <laughs> we, you know, we really wanted to stay close. And I was sitting in my sister's backyard on her hammock and, um, kind of just like, processing everything that happened and trying to come to peace with everything and I just started having this conversation with my mom and I was like this isn't me responding like this has to be her talking with me just kind of reassuring me like I'm okay it's all going to be okay you're going to be okay and it was that was really comforting as well and I was like there's no way I could be coming up with these you know her responding to me like this is her this is crazy and I've never had experiences like that with someone on the other side. She's the only person that's been like super close to me that has passed. So that was really special to know that she was there and talking to me and comforting me. And then the very next day, um, my husband and I were driving in the car and I kind of had this panic attack wash over me. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Um, I don't know if it was like PTSD from watching her not being able to breathe, but I was really like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe. Something's wrong. I'm freaking out and I'm sad and I'm, you know, kind of a mess. And all of a sudden this song came on um, in the car that I had never heard before. It's by Trevor Hall, which I love him, but I've never heard this song before. And the words that started playing was, um, my love is just a reminder, find your center. And I took that as my mom, just like, Michaela, calm down. Like, you're okay. <laughs> Breathe, find your center. And that was really cool. So she's kind of spoken to me um, through music a lot. She loved music. She loved um, the oldies like Simon and Garfunkel, Paul Simon. And so I listened to them a lot just to like feel close with her and dance with her and jam out and stuff. So that was really cool. So now that song I listen to all the time. My husband actually sent that song to me this morning to listen to before I started talking to you so I could like find my center. <laughs> so that was so cool. Um, um, oh, so here's a funny one. 
I woke up, it was like six o'clock in the morning and I'm, you know, my, everyone's asleep. My house is quiet. It's dark. And out of nowhere, every single fire alarm starts going off in my house for like three seconds and then just stops. And I was like, what in the world was that? And then all of a sudden in my mind, I could just hear my mom laughing like hysterically. So I'm like, you still have your sense of humor. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> it was so funny. So then a couple weeks later, um, I went up to, we, there's a mountain here called Pine Valley, really beautiful, sacred space. And so I'm like, I'm going to go up there, just be by myself, just be with her for a minute. Because I was still kind of struggling a little bit just with her being gone. So I drove up to this mountain and as it's November by this time and I'm getting to the gate and the guard um, was getting ready to shut the gate and he was like, sorry, we're closing down for the season. And I was just like, oh, okay. And he looks at me and he's like, you know what? If you're only gonna be a couple hours, go ahead and go in, do your thing and come back. And I was like, thank you. Like it was meant to be. <laughs> so I drove up in there found myself a little spot in between all of these trees, put my blanket down and just kind of sat there. It was a little eerie because it was so quiet. Like I'm not used to quiet. I have three kids and it's like chaos all the time. So being in just like pure silence where I could literally hear the bird's wings flapping and like chipping away at the tree. It was so peaceful and calm. And so I just sat there I said, all right, mom, if you're with me, let me know. And so right at that moment, I look up and there's a huge orange butterfly just on the tree in front of me, just sat there for a while. I was like, oh, immediately felt with love, you know, and I felt warm. It's cold at the time, but I'm just like so warm and like, I call it spirit bumps. <laughs> I was just tingly all over and it was so magical and cool and um, of, told me that she was there. So it's been really fun having all these little experiences of her showing me that she's still here. And she knew that I've always really been into like the healing arts and stuff like that. And she's always been really intuitive. And I feel like I've been intuitive, but since she's passed, it's really opened up that door for me um, to be aware of my intuition and like being able to channel people would be incredible because obviously I know I'm channeling her. So if I could channel other people's loved ones and, you know, give them messages, like it would just be the most fulfilling, amazing thing. So that's amazing. So why don't yeah. you do it? Yeah. So I'm about to go get trained in other healing arts. So yay. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So there's a couple of things that were coming through that um, I wanted to share. And like, as you were speaking, your mom was coming through. Like when you were um, seeing that dream of her and her wanting the tube out and your sister had that as well, um, she definitely did. She wants you to just feel complete validation and peace with all of the decisions that were made. And she also talks about you handling things too in a way where I feel like you brought a lot of people together in that time. Like, um, she just is very proud of how you brought everybody together and like corralled them all together. Friends, what if there was nothing stopping you from becoming abundant to the max in all things? Finances, time, nothing was holding you back from becoming your healthiest, happiest, most financially abundant self yet. Friends, Thanks to our annual and monthly angel members, we've been able to grant over $100,000 in partial scholarships so that souls who want access to life-changing teachings in the angel membership have that opportunity. And we have more partial scholarships to give. Don't let your egoic mind tell you that you're not worthy because the angels and I are here telling you, you are worthy. This is your year but I can't help you get where you're going if I'm not working with you in one of my programs. Become an angel member now. Go to theangelmedium.com, then the angel membership tab to sign up. If you need a scholarship, let us help you.
Scroll to the bottom of the Angel Membership page and click the link for partial scholarship options. Links are in the show notes. And thank you. Thank you for coming together as a community. Thank you for contributing what you can each month. And thank you for helping us reach hundreds of deserving souls with life-changing teachings in the Angel Membership this year. This is going to be your best year yet. Yeah, it has made our family closer. So I was kind of thinking about it. My siblings and I, we're not a hugging type of family. We don't hug. (laughs) But when she passed, I hugged every one of them. And to this day, when we have little get togethers and are saying goodbye, we'll give each other a hug. And it's like, wow, (laughs) when you know, we really have come closer as a family, my siblings and I. So it's been really cool to witness and be a part of. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, and I know what you mean about the ventilator that like, it just wasn't the right way for her. And I think that that's something that we have to talk about more that maybe it's not talked about enough. Um, when my kiddo was young and she was born with a syndrome and she was in the hospital, like pretty much, um, for the first six months of her life, there was a time where she had to be on a ventilator as well. Um, and I think it was one of the hardest things for my husband and I to experience. Oh, and especially being your child, that would, oh. Well, and just watching somebody when they can't breathe for themselves, having to have a a machine breathe for them. Um, But it it also saved her life. And so I just want to put it out there to everybody that it's not what I wanted for my kiddo. It's not what you wanted for your mom. It's what my daughter's soul wanted for herself and what your mom's soul wanted for herself. And it's okay for everybody's decision to be what that soul needs for themselves in the moment. Um, But I'm so glad that you listened to your mom um, because she just feels so much peace. And I feel like she says in that moment when they took the vent out, you felt a shift in her energy, 110%, correct? Yes, absolutely. Like a complete relief. And thank you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, that was real. And the other thing that your mom comes in saying is the experience is the proof, evidence, and validation that you need for your own journey. And so the experience with her when you were seven, um, all of the angel stories with her are the proof and evidence for your own life, for your own faith. Does that make sense? Totally. So in the sorry, it's interesting because she's very she was very religious growing up, like very um, faithful in her religion, and she tried to raise all of us kids to be the same way. But we all are very um, opinionated, and we think for ourselves, and we ask questions, and we didn't follow her steps with the religion, but. She came to a point where she accepted that we were more spiritual than religious. And so she kind of, I feel like we helped her kind of open that door for herself as well, that um, this religion isn't the only way. There is more to life than this, you know. That's so awesome. I love that. The movie um, or like the episode that we were filming right before this one, I was talking about the movie Contact and um, she kind of hands that to you too. Instead of like a dad in the movie, when you watch it, I want you to think of mom, Um, but there's messages in there for you. Okay. Contact. Yeah. The movie Contact. Down. Okay. The other thing that she was saying um, is that you have twin energy in this lifetime. So um, it's not like you have a twin per se, but Mm -hmm. you have like a twin soul energy. I feel like in one of your sisters. Oh, do you know who I'm talking about? I think so. Okay. So she just says, know that you and her have been twins in um, past lives. And what I know, the very little that I know about twins, Mm -hmm. um, this is different information. They've never brought anything like this through before. 
from what I know about twins, there's a different energetic connection between them than there are with regular siblings or other people we have roles with in our life, like parents or partners or kids um, or friends. And what spirit is coming through saying to everybody listening is that you can have a twin energy in this lifetime that can be in any different role. You could have a twin from a past life that comes in in this lifetime as a friend as a sibling, as a parent, as a daughter. Um, and just know that your energetic bond with her is different because of the energy in those past lifetimes. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah. Um, and your mom says for that sister, tell her everything's going to be okay. Okay. She knows everything that's going on right now. And she said, um, the angels of blessings are with her and the angels of strength. So just let her know that um, and that there's a lot of, of just blessings on their way to her right now. Awesome. Yeah. I think she needs that for sure. She's definitely going through it right now. Yeah. She's, um, she's two years older than I am. And she has been, so there's a gap from me and her. And then the next one up is six years. So her and I are pretty close compared to the other siblings in age. And we've uh, been through a lot together. <laughs> um, both have gone through addictions with each other. She's tends to come in and out of hers and she, you know, she does her best, but you know, she struggles and she kind of has that hold when it comes to that side of life. And so when my mom passed, it was kind of a, a, an eye opener for her, I guess, because she didn't have mom to take care of her all the time, like she needed her. And so now she's kind of fending for herself. And I think her knowing that it's going to be okay is something that she really needs to know. One of the things that we do in the Angel Reiki School is talk about how you can blend all of your different spiritual gifts and what all of your different spiritual gifts are. And um, not everybody has the gift of being a teacher, okay? It, it is a gift. And I don't mean like a teacher inside an elementary, a middle, a high school. I mean that you have the ability to teach other people in a way that they learn easily and advance their consciousness. And one of the biggest um, misnomers, misconceptions that people have when they're a teacher is they start to get into this mindset that like life is suffering and I'm always going to suffer from this or I'm always going to be plagued by this challenge. I'm always going to be having to deal with this addiction or whatever it might be. And what your mom keeps doing is making a circle for that mindset of what that mindset looks like. Like you're constantly spinning the drain. You're constantly in that mind loop. And she takes your sister out of it where she says, um, really the role and responsibility. And this has been an ongoing message this year from spirit, the role and the responsibility of teachers is learning themselves, is healing themselves. Because as teachers learn, as they heal, they are spending the money, the time, the energy, putting in the work to do what it needs to, what they need to do to learn what they need to learn so that other people don't have to spend that same time, energy, money, learning they can actually step on the shoulders of the people who have learned the lessons and go farther and i don't know exactly what your sister does for work and there are some people who go through addictions who don't have the strength maybe to work with other people going through that same addiction because it kind of takes them back yeah into the energy but your mom said that's not the case for your sister 
Like she has everything that she needs to be able to work with people with the same addiction. In fact, it's in her life plan. It's part of it that she's not here to suffer from it for forever. She was here to go through it for a tiny chapter in her life to heal herself and to show others how to heal themselves too. Yes. It's, she's talked about it, doing that when she would go through her moments of being clean and she had done the steps, she's done the work. That's what she wanted to do. That's what her heart pulls her to is to help people not have to suffer like she did. (laughs) So I hope that she can continue on that path because it would be really beautiful to see the people she could help, especially since it's such a problem and it's growing, you know, everywhere. So it would be really, really special. So did she have a relapse? Uh, She did. She's had a few. Yeah. Um, She, my mom took over her son, was raising her son right before she passed. Well, your mom talks about this too. And she says it's very, very clear. You need to make this very clear to her that the relapse itself wasn't her. It's like, it's not a bad thing about her. It's not a knock on her. It doesn't mean that she's going to suffer from this for forever. It's because we need to learn how tough it is to stay on track and to teach other people how to avoid the relapse. Mm -hmm. So you can't teach other people how to do that without experiencing the energy of it yourself. Right. Um, There's so much there and your mom keeps showing me a couple of things for your sister. She just keeps telling her, breathe, like just breathe. When it really gets hard, like a lot of deep breath work, embodiment work could really go a long way for her of breathing through certain things and try different breathing methods. Like there's the Wim Hof method. Um, He even like has those cold baths where you learn how to breathe through. And like, if you can learn how to breathe in that ice cold water, he says like you can learn how to breathe through anything. Different types of breathing methods are really the strategy that your mom is taking her down. Um, And also she says, hold the vision for your sister, your twin soul. Um, of her speaking to large crowds, teaching, traveling and speaking in different places, writing, maybe even creating courses. Um, There's a lot that she's here to do and it's not going to happen all in one year. It's taking one step each year to get where she needs to be. And um, she said, what's ask her what's the step for this year that she knows she needs to take because she already knows what she needs to do this year and and the other thing that your mom's saying to tell her is that people make the mistake of like okay i just want to do it all i want to do all the things right here in this one year and she's like if you try and do all the things you're going to get none of the things done If she focuses in on the one thing she really knows she needs to accomplish this year, she'll do it to perfection. And that's the, that's what spirit needs of her for this one year. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yay. I'm excited to talk to her about that. Yay. I haven't really talked to her a lot just because. There's been some distance, but it's funny because we call each other our soulmate. <laughs> we're like, no! We have for a long time called each other our soulmate in this life and past lives and lives to come. So very yeah. cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Michaela, thank you so much for being on the show today. I so appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Awesome. Friends, if you're listening, if you have angel stories, please go on theangelmedium.com and share them with us. The link is also in the show notes. We love having you on to share your stories because they provide so much hope um, to others who are listening. Thanks, friends. Have a blessed, blessed day. Beautiful soul, thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Julie. You know I'm all about connecting you with messages from your angels and loved ones on the other side. 
If you've been listening today and you're super excited and just have to know which angels are around you right now, who's connecting with you, and what messages they have for you, go to theangelmedium.com. Register for a session. You can do a reading with me or a member of my team, and we can help you in making sure that your angels are doing the very best they can to support you and guide you to your best life. If this sounds like you, virtual sessions, they're only offered on my website. Sign up today. And if you're the person who's really excited, you can sign up for my Angel Reiki School to become a certified angel messenger. That's for the healers among us who feel called to grow their intuition to the max and serve humanity with their gifts. You'll learn Reiki, mediumship, how to deliver angel messages, and how to get clients. That's the Angel Reiki School at theangelmedium.com or DM me on Instagram at Angel Podcast with any questions. Before you go, connect with your angels by placing your hands on your heart. Take a deep breath. Imagine a doorway filled with God's unconditional love is right in front of you. Step into that love and feel it as it fills your body, chakras, and auric field. Now ask your angels, what would you have me know today? And open yourself to the positive, loving messages they have just for you. <laughs> 